happy to the Sonia Sudbury Company Lock Versa Good Vibrations Festival. This is one of the workshops, one of the arts and crafts workshops. Uh, we are all going to be making a spice wreath. Now, I just want to let you know, you can see there's a sign in the top corner. It says recording. This workshop is being recorded and that's part of the reporting purposes because it's a free workshop. We've got sponsorship supported by the Arts Council England. So we need to show them a recording, but the only person who's going to be recorded is me, the artist. So your faces won't get seen. So don't worry about that. Um, it's just for the evidence. So don't worry about the recording button. I can see you all, which is fantastic. Uh, and it means that during the session I can see how you're getting on. Now we're going to be using our hands through the whole session and your hands might get sticky so it might be hard for you to type in um, if you want to ask me a question it's going to be hard for you to type in. So if at any point in the workshop you want to speak to me and ask something just raise your hand like this Okay, and we will unmute you and then you can talk and let me know. But if you start with your sticky hands on your laptop and your phone, it probably won't work out so well. Um, but I'm going to run over, first of all, what we need for this workshop, just in case you're missing something, you'll have a chance to go and get it. So the first thing we need is some cardboard. Okay, I've got a bit from a cardboard box. So you might have cardboard from somewhere else. So exactly, you might have cardboard. Um, from just another source and there's all different types of boxes you've got a piece that looks like sort of box there fantastic that's superb okay so we need the card um now we're going to be drawing a circle on our card so i suggested using a plate so i've actually got two plates here now have a look at your cardboard and just see if you've got something that you can draw a circle around. So if you've got a smaller piece of cardboard than me, you might need a smaller circle, but we need two. So we need, um, we're gonna be drawing a big circle. That's the big circle I'm gonna show you. That fits the plate like this. And a smaller circle in the middle. So just make sure you've got two things you can draw around. I mean, you might have a compass or you might have a bowl, or you might just have another, you know, a bit of plastic bowl or something like that. You can draw circles around. That's all you need to do. Um, so that's the plates and the card. Okay. We also need some paint. So hopefully you've got some paint to hand. If you haven't, don't worry too much. It's okay if you haven't got paints, um, but I'll show you that. And we need some of the runny PVA glue. Okay. So those are the main supplies. And then our spices. So I'm going to show you the spices that I've got. Now, you might have different spices to me, but hopefully you've got some of my spices. I'm going to show you I've got some bay leaves here. So if anyone's got bay leaves, show me your bay leaves. We you hold one up. Wonderful. Okay, fantastic. Um, I've also got chilies. You have to be careful with chilies. I don't want anybody rubbing their hands whilst touching their chilies, rubbing their eyes because it might sort of um, irritate your eyes. But chilies here. So I've got chilies and bay leaves in here. I've got cardamom and I've got cloves as well. So these are much smaller. And I also got some star anise because these are so pretty. They just look really really lovely so they're wonderful for crafting now some of you might have cinnamon as well um so we might be using cinnamon sticks too i'm going to let you use the spices that you want to use so that's what we need um so i think it's time to get started now there's another camera view on your screen it's called craft view can everybody see it it's this one i'm going to put my hand there can you see a screen which you can see the wreath on called craft of you. I want you to go to the top corner, it's a blue box and there's three dots on there. Okay, so you just click on there and put pin video. So there's a blue box with three white dots and it says pin video. If you click pin video, it means that you can see this video. That's the main video that you can see. So if you can everybody see my hand, Good. I'm just going to double check, make sure everybody else can see this main view. Because when I'm doing, um, when you're following, following along in the workshop, 
you need to be looking at this one. If you look at my face, you won't really see what's happening. So you need to look at the one that's called craft view. Just gonna go over that again. So if you go to the craft view, hover above it, there's a blue box with three white dots. Click on, the, click on that and it says uh, pin video. So pin that video. And it means that throughout the workshop, you're gonna be looking at this screen. Okay, looks like we are ready to start. So I'm gonna actually move this out of the way for now to make some space. I'm going to move my spices out of the way. So the first thing we need to do is prepare our cardboard. OK, so take your cardboard, whatever cardboard you're using and whatever circles you're using. I want you to draw around it. So I've got a pencil or a pen. And I say I'm using a big dinner plate and a smaller dinner plate. So it's worth keeping your audio off unless you want to ask me a question. Um, if you do, you can still hear me. And uh, hopefully you're all okay. So drawing our circle on our cardboard. As I say, you might have a smaller piece. That's totally okay. You've got a smaller piece of cardboard or whatever size you've got, you need to put a circle on there. So I've done my big circle. I'm now going to do my small circle. I'm going to place it in the middle. And just to give you a reminder, we're obviously aiming, aiming to cut out this sort of wreath shape. So it's got a big circle and a small circle in the middle. Okay, so let me draw around this one. Okay, so now I have got, You can see that pencil lines. You can see that I've got my wreath shape on there. So when oh wonderful, lovely to see your cardboard there. So now you need your scissors. Okay, and you need to cut out this bit. Now the middle bit might be a bit tricky to cut. So you can get some help with that. Or best thing to do is put a big hole in the middle and then cut around it. Um, see how you get on. You can also cut through this bit and sellotape it together but I want you to cut out the big piece and cut out the small piece as well. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that and I know that some people's cardboard will be trickier to cut than others. My cardboard is very thick. Um, I actually needed a craft knife to cut mine out because I've got particularly thick cardboard. That's what I had at home but you might have softer cardboard at home. I'm actually going to show you I've actually got my cut out already. Um, it can be cut with scissors, but it takes a lot longer to um, cut out with scissors. So I'm going to actually just, yeah, you can see I can see a cereal box there, which is wonderful. I'm just going to flip through the videos and see how you are getting on. But you don't need to keep your camera on if you don't want to, but if you do want to, it means I can see where you're up to as well. I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Um, and when we move on to the next stage, it doesn't matter if you haven't finished cutting out the cardboard because the next stage um, is gonna take us a little while anyway, so you can sort of catch up, but I'll definitely um, leave that there for you, which is great. And I say, nice see everybody at home doing all your cutting out and crafting, joining in. And if you have done it, uh -huh, I can see, BJ's got a nice cutting mat there, which looks really nice. That's what I use. I had a thick cardboard and I had to use a craft knife as she's doing, um, which is superb. But it does work for any cardboard, so that's okay as well. I'm going to leave this one just here. Okay. Oh, it will be quite nice when you cut it out. Um, and your videos are on, then hold it up for me so I can see that you've got it ready. Um, and as I say, if you're still cutting out, that's perfectly okay. Oh, lovely, beautiful cutting out there I can see from Shreya and Aradna, Aradha, Radhana, beautiful names, I can see. And I will be referring to your names, so hopefully you don't mind if I, if I see one of you doing something, I can mention that as well. Beautiful, okay. Looks like a little bit longer. Right. So 
So good to see all your wreaths coming together now. Now, it doesn't matter. You might actually have, yeah, if you've got like a cereal box, one side will obviously have the pattern on there. One side will be plain. So make sure you're using the plain. So if it's wonderful, I can see yours is nice and ready. Lakshmi, uh, who else can I see? Ready. Okay, fantastic. So I'm going to move on to the next stage. But as I say, don't worry. If you're still cutting out, you can keep cutting out. I'm just gonna show you what we're doing because you can definitely, definitely catch up. So the next thing we actually need is our glue. We need our glue and we need our paint as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to use the glue and the paint. And the purpose of this is we want to color the background of our wreath. If you haven't got any paints, that's totally okay. If you haven't got any paint, you don't need the glue. You can color this in with felt tip pens. You can color this in with crayons or coloring pencils, anything else you've got. Or if you've got, um, I can see some watercolor paints there, that's fantastic. Um, if you've got a runny paint, you like this one. So maybe you've got a poster paint um, or an acrylic paint. The reason we're going to do use the glue is it just helps our project dry quicker. I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. So I've got a container here, a bit of Tupperware or a plate, and I'm just going to pour some paint. I'm going to show you this method, but if you're not using paint, as I say, you can use your felt tip pens, you can use your crayons, anything like that, just to colour this in, because otherwise it's going to be just a bit plain if we leave it like this, but we like colour, so we want to colour this in. So I put some paint in, in here, okay. And now I'm gonna add some glue. So I'm really just adding the same amount of glue and the same amount of paint, okay. And I'm gonna take my brush and I'm mixing glue and paint together. And the only reason I'm doing that is because it makes the paint sticky. And when we stick all our spices on, it's going to hold them. But you don't have to do it. It's only if you've got it. You can, if you just got those paints, because I know, um, Aria, you showed me a paint palette. So that's fine. You can just use that. You can just paint this um, as it is. I would say that it's going to be, if you just paint it um, without the glue, obviously it's going to be quite wet. Um, you might need a tissue to dab it, but we'll go over that after. So if everyone's got their colours ready, whether you're using a crayon, so you can use a crayon, you can use felt tip pens, whatever you're using, we are now going to actually paint the surface of our wreath. So I'm going to start on mine. And as I said, I'm using glue and paint mixed together. Okay. So I'm just going to go around and I've actually chosen um, a gold paint. I thought it looks quite nice. You can use any colour that you want to use. It always, it's all going to come out nice anyway. So here we are. So, okay. So I found that if I do um, one or two coats, one coat, you can still see the cardboard underneath, two coats will look much more stronger. So, once you've done one coat, you can go and do two coats as well. Or as I say, just colouring it in whatever you've got, whatever you're using. Okay, so I'm going to go around. Um, and if you're still cutting out, I can still see some people cutting out, that's totally fine. I'm going to give you a chance to catch up. So when I finish painting this, I'm going to put it to the side. I'm going to wait for everybody else to, to catch up so we can all do it at the same time. You don't really need to speed ahead. We've got plenty of time. Okay. We just move this around now. Oh, I think my craft view has disappeared. So I'm just going to check and see what's happened to the craft view. I can see it's gone off.
Okay, so while you continue to paint, um, I actually just need to go and get a, a charger from my phone. Um, it has just showed up, but it's low battery. And um, I think the reason is I was doing another craft workshop before this one. Uh, and so my phone is running out of it. So I'm actually gonna just step away um, from this and I'm going to just go and sort out my battery. I'm so sorry about that. So give me a second. I'm going to just turn off the sound, but you all keep. Okay, I'm back. So apologies about that. As I say, I'm actually running um, three different craft workshops today. And so my camera um, is on all day and uh, it's using up the battery. So hopefully everybody has been busy painting. Oh, I can see a beautiful yellow wreath there. That looks wonderful. I can see a blue wreath as well. This is all excellent stuff. So I'm just gonna finish doing mine of course, because I stepped away for a bit, so. So you can actually, if your paint's looking a bit lumpy, oh wow, beautiful, it's lovely to see your gorgeous wreath spaces coming along. Okay. So I'm just going, some of my paint is a little bit, um, I think because I've got the glue, it's a bit lumpy, so I'm just gonna smooth it out in places. Okay, and a trick for anybody who's using the glue and the paint together is actually just to go around, make it all even. So have a look at the screen. I'm just going down and making all, and doing my lines so that it all looks even. So I painted it all around, but now I'm just gonna go and create these lines. It just makes the, the wreath look much smarter. Otherwise it's all gonna be a little bit messy, but that's okay. But I just mean, this is even more neater. I've just gone around and created this line. Okay. And it's all in the same direction. Okay. Looking good, everyone. So I'm just finishing off now. Okay, so mine is done. I would love to see a thumbs up on the screen if you are finished. Give me a thumbs up. Just going to check. That's what I got there. Make sure I'm just going to go through it, make sure I can see everybody. Wonderful. Okay, super. Right, so now we are on to our spices. So let's get all our spices ready. So I've got 
chilies in a bowl here. And I've got my bay leaves here, star anise, and I've got my cloves. Okay, so we're going to be sticking our spices onto the wreath, but we need to get our glue ready. So I want you to get your glue uh, and pour it into a container. So if anyone was doing the painting and the glue, you can put that one to the side. And this time we just want the glue on its own. And runny glue is best for this. Just a bit thicker. Now, one thing I need to tell you is, some of the things that we're sticking, they're quite thick. Um, and because they're quite thick, um, it's gonna look like they're not sticking, but I promise you they are sticking. You just have to leave it to dry. So it's gonna be hard for you to show me your wreath now. You've gotta keep it flat on the table. If you lift it up, then it might disturb the spices. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, um, I want you to take your biggest spice. So whatever your biggest spice is, my biggest spice is my chilies. Your biggest spice might be something else, but I want to actually just, um, all the way around the edge. I'm just gonna start laying out some chilies around the edge of it. So not on the wreath, I just want to position where they're going to go. Okay, when you're looking at your spices, have a go, have a look through them all. I'm gonna show you the difference. So this is a chili um, that's very flat. Okay, that's gonna be easier to glue. If you've got a chili that's a bit more curly, we can still do it, but when you're going through, have a look for the ones that are nice and flat, just because it's just gonna be a bit easier, but I'm still gonna use these ones as well. But I've got a bowl of so many chilies. I think it's quite nice to go through them and pick out which are the ones that are nice and flat. Okay, so I'm gonna pop these around there. Okay, so yeah, I've got my chilies going around. Um, and you might have noticed that it smells absolutely amazing. This workshop just smells so fabulous. Um, and that's all the different spices. When you've got them out of the packets and you've got them all in, um, in jars and you can smell them all, it smells really good. But just be careful with the chilies because if you touch chilies and you touch your eyes, um, you might sort of irritate your eyes. So you can see I've got my chilies going around like that, looks quite nice. Um, so I can see where my chilies are going to go. Okay, so now I want you to take your brush and we're gonna start gluing these on. Now we need quite a bit of glue, so lots of glue. Um, and the reason we're using this glue as well is that it dries clear. So don't need to worry about seeing the glue um, I'm going to just paint straight on. I want to glue my chilli on right in front of, so this is where I've laid out the chilli. Which one can I show you? I've laid out the chilli here. And I'm going to glue my wreath here. Okay. And then we're going to pop our chilli on there. Now, I want you to just hold it for a few seconds make sure it's all stuck down. Um, and it might not be flat, that's perfectly okay. This glue will capture it as long as we leave it to dry. So now I want you to go around and glue all of your chilies, or if you're not using a chili, if you're using another spice, you can go around and glue them all on in the same way. So I've got that lovely pattern coming together. Okay. So hopefully, so I've now glued on three of them. As I say, just hold them for a few seconds each time. You don't have to hold them too much, just hold them a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna go around and glue some more of them on. There we are. So this wreath will look really nice in the kitchen and it will be a nice scented wreath for your kitchens. You can hang it up in the kitchen. 
um, or somewhere else as well, but I think it will definitely look pretty on the kitchen door or something like that. Okay, so one more there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna keep gluing mine on. Okay, I want you to continue what you're doing. I'm just going to position my chilies. I'm not gluing these on because I'm showing you, but I want you to glue these on. I'm just going to talk you through what happens next. So we've chosen, I've gone for the chilies. Now, if you didn't use chilies, you could have used another spice. Maybe the cinnamon sticks would work quite well for this as well. They need more glue for the cinnamon sticks. Now I can see some of them are standing up. They're not flat, but the glue has captured them in. So they'll be okay. I wasn't glued. Okay, so now I'm going to show you that I'm going to start using my bay leaves now. Now don't worry if you're not up to the same stage as me, that's perfectly fine. I'm, I want to stick my bay leaves in the middle. So I'm just going to lay my bay leaves on top. Okay, there we are. And so exactly the same thing. We want to glue our bay leaves inside. So you can see like this. So you might have used chilies and bay leaves. You might have used cinnamon sticks and bay leaves. I want to create this lovely flower. Now, you can also do your own design. I want to show you this design. I think it's a really pretty design. If you've got your own ideas, that's okay as well. I'm going to give you um, maybe sort of like five, ten minutes to do all of this gluing now. And while you're doing the gluing, I'm going to show you a few slides just so we can learn a little bit more about spices. So you don't need to look at the spices, the um, slides if you don't want to, you can just have a listen. And I want you to just have a listen. And um, while you're listening, I just want you to go around and glue all of these in place so that hopefully afterwards we'll all be up to the same, uh, at the same time. So I'm gonna switch over now to the screen share. So just give me a few seconds to do that. I'll give this a go. There we are. Okay. So I'm just going to show you. We're just going to run through. I just wanted to show you um, some of the spices that we are using today. So we have obviously got our bay leaves. Now these smell, I think these probably smell the most out of all of them. Um, and bay leaves are often used in soups and stews or a lot of people um, cook fish with them as well. Um, they actually came from Asia, but you might have found them in Mediterranean cooking. They're quite popular there as well, especially as they in the fish dishes. Um, and what's really interesting is they were actually used for head crowns. So if you can imagine these leaves were actually worn, um, joined together as head crowns. So that would be quite a nice craft uh, to use. But what do these smell like? And what do bay leaves taste like? I would love someone to let me know what does a bay leaf smell like? And what does it taste like? Would anyone like to let me know? He can let me know um, <laughs> if I'm waving or... Um, turning your audio on and letting me know if you know what a bay leaf smells like. I don't know what it smells like. Anybody mm -hmm. could let me know. Yeah. Just having a look at what you're all up to as well. Raise your hand. I think they're very, very fragrant. They definitely, the whole workshop, the whole of my room smells like these. Okay. So that's the bay leaves. Um, I put on there as well that some people actually burn them. People actually burn these leaves. And a bit like incense, they give off a smell that's very, very calming. Incense, it'll be good. Mm, absolutely. Okay, so now let's have a look. We move on to the cloves. So these are the small cloves, very tiny, these ones. Uh, these originate in Indonesia. And... Um, they're actually very good for um, killing off bacteria. So you can actually use these for um, cleaning things. 
um, like if you're making like a sort of like your own detergent or cleaning solutions at home, um, then cloves are very good um, in there. A lot of people actually use vinegar for cleaning, so they don't want to use um, sort of chemically uh, cleaning products. Uh, vinegar is very good and um, cloves are very good as well. Move on to the next one. So chilies, chilies are very exciting. So we've put our chilies on our wreaths already. There's over 400 types of chili. Can you believe that? So many types of chili. I don't think I've tried that many types. So who here is a fan of chilies? Do you like having chili in your food? I want you to wave your hands. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Chili fans. Good to see that you like your chilies. Very important. So I've put on here that chilies can make your nose run. Chilies always make my nose run. Whenever I eat something with chili in there, I don't know why, but my nose always runs. Does anybody else find that, that their nose runs when they eat chili? Uh -huh, I think I saw a hand up there. And chilies are very good for boosting your immune system. So that means that they sort of keep you healthy and stop you from you know, catching colds and that sort of thing. It just keeps you really healthy. So it's really good to have um, chilies in your diet. But the most hottest part of the chili, if we look at the chili, the hottest part of the chili um, is not this red outside bit and it's not the seeds inside. It's actually this little white pith that you get inside. So if you get that in your cooking, I mean, if you get that when you're having a dinner, uh, that's the bit that is really, really hot. Okay, so star anise, this is such a pretty, pretty herb, spice, I should say, it's so lovely. Uh, I put on here that these were so highly prized like in the olden days, we're talking biblical times here, they were so highly prized that they were actually used as payment. So instead of money, people actually traded in star anise. And you can see why, because if you look at your, if you've got star anise and you have a look at it, I mean, it doesn't look like anything else. Um, a star anise actually comes from, it's actually the fruit from the star anise tree. These trees can give us fruit for a hundred years. So if you ever see, if you ever be lucky enough to see, a star anise tree. I mean, that's a very respectable thing that it does. So you can pay it, so you can give it some thanks and say thank you so much because a hundred years of working to give us star anise is very, very impressive. So cardamoms, we're going to be using some cardamoms as well. Um, these are very common in desserts. So who likes the flavour of cardamom? Wonderful, so I can see there, we've got some hands up. It's very nice, it's very nice in desserts. I've got somebody stuck there. I'm actually gonna see, um, I can't see all the screens right now, but if anyone's stuck, I'm just gonna finish answer, showing the um, presentation and then I'll come back and answer any questions. We're nearly done anyway. Uh, so cardamoms can actually be used for some types of snake poison to reduce the poison. Not all snakes, but if you've got a snake bite, um, there are some types that cardamom can actually cure. So in Nepal, it used to be the biggest exporter of cardamom, but now it's actually Guatemala, which is in Central America. I was very surprised to hear that because cardamom is so popular in South Asian desserts, but it's grown a lot in Guatemala. So that really surprised me. And then the cinnamon sticks. This is one of the facts that I love about cinnamon. So in ancient Egypt, cinnamon was more expensive than gold. So gold is obviously one of the most expensive things in the world, but our cinnamon stick, our humble cinnamon stick was actually considered more expensive than gold. It's actually one of the oldest spices in the world and very, very yummy and flavoursome. But what does it smell and taste like? It's got quite a bit of sort of woody smell to it, a bit of a woody taste. Um, it does come from the bark of a cinnamon tree. And you've got in the picture there, they look like quills. So I think I've got some cinnamon sticks down here. I think I have, I can't actually remember. I think I'll put them in my kitchen. Um, if you look at a cinnamon stick, sometimes it just looks like a piece, literally looks like a piece of tree bark. And sometimes it looks like this beautiful quill shape. So that's our presentation. So I'm going to stop the screen sharing now and see how you are all getting on. So Lakshmi, I know you had your hand raised. Um, did you have a question? I'm, we're just going to turn on your um, audio and see how you're getting on. 
Uh, my name is actually Surabi. <laughs> that was my mom. Oh, is name. it? Oh, I see. Okay, so, Surabi. So, um, are you okay with everything? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, well, thank you for letting me know about that. Um, how is everybody getting on? I'm going to go back to my um, wreath for now. So I've got the chilies and I've got the bay leaves on there. Um, now I know, oh wow, that's superb. So I can see that um, Sai and Um have got yours up. I'm really impressed that you're holding it up like that because when I hold mine up, they tend to fall off. So very, very impressive. Um, I've got a beautiful one from Yolanda, it's red. That looks wonderful. So it looks like um, we are ready to move on to the next part. So what we're gonna do now is you see our bay leaves, we're gonna stick something in the middle of our bay leaves. And um, what I've decided to do is I'm gonna stick the star anise in the middle. So I'm gonna pop some star anise. Now, if you've not got a star anise, you can also stick a clove in the middle. That's perfectly okay. Or something else that you've got. I'm gonna lay them out now. Okay. And I want to stick one in the middle of all the bay leaves. And, um, as I say, it just smells so nice. It's really nice to do a craft project that looks pretty, but smells lovely as well. Um, does everybody like the smells that they can smell? Okay, I've got a question there from um, Aria. So I'm just gonna turn on your audio, Aria. I think it looks like you've got a question for me. Um, I do not have the bay leaves. Mm -hmm. What did you use instead? Um, I have chili and I have, um, I'm not, um, are they the same? Okay, great. So you know um, we've got chilli and we've got bay leaves on ours. You could actually stick in your cinnamon sticks um, in between the chilies if you like. Um, so where I've got cinnamon, or I've got chilli and bay leaves, you can actually stick chilies and cinnamon sticks around yours if you'd like to. Um, or, you know these in the gaps, instead of putting it on top, I'm going to show you on here, Instead of sticking your uh, star in each, you can just stick it straight onto, straight onto the gap in the gap. So you don't have to put it on the bailiff, just stick it in between. That'll look really pretty as well. But if you have got the bay leaves, you can stick them on top. And if you have them, you can, you can actually pop them in anywhere else. As I say, your wreath doesn't need to look exactly like mine. It can be your own version as well. Uh, it's really nice to just sort of do what you feel like doing as well. Just follow, follow your instincts and what you think looks good and what you've got, because you might not have the same things as me. Uh, I'm just going to pop mine on there. Okay. Now, these are quite thick. They will need quite a bit of glue on them. Um, but as I say, when you actually leave it to dry, they'll stick beautifully. So now I'm going to go back to my glue. I'm going to start gluing some of these on. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm sticking my star anise onto my bay leaves. Okay, so I'm going to add some glue on there. I put quite a thick bit of glue. It's going to dry clear. So it doesn't matter if you can see the glue. That is definitely not anything to worry about. So go around and glue these on. Okay. Here we are. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going around. If anyone is using cinnamon sticks, as I say, um, they look amazing, they smell amazing, they will just need a bit more glue. And the reason I'm not using cinnamon sticks is I, I put them on the list, but I've actually run out. Um, and I wanted people to use what they've got at home. And I ran out of cinnamon sticks. So I thought instead of going to buy some, I'll just use what I've got. Um, it's always good to use up things you've got at home. Um, and, but they still look, you know, you can definitely use them as well. So they might just need a bit of extra glue. That's that's all. You can incorporate them how you want to. Okay. Here we are. We've got our hashtag, which is LockVisa21. So afterwards, if anybody wants to share the finished photograph of their wreath, um, and perhaps you've done a different design to mine, um, and you share it on social media with a hashtag, hopefully we'll all be able to have a look and see um, how you got on. I'm just going to move mine around so it's a bit easier for me to access. There we are. 
Mm. Smells. Oh, I'll keep going on about smell, but it does smell so lovely. And um, when I made the sample of it, when I made it a couple of weeks ago, I tested this out. And um, I just remember my whole room smelt like these beautiful spices um, and it just seemed like a natural incense. It was so nice. It's a bit different when you use the spices in cooking um, because I know they all fuse together and you get the sort of cooking smell. But in this workshop, you can just smell the spices individually and it's so lovely. Okay, so I can see some cinnamon sticks and I can see some star anise. Oh, wow, it's all looking wonderful. Right, so I'm going to carry on with my design. And um, around the edges, we've got, I've got these little ones. So I'd love to know, have you got, has anyone got cardamom and, and cloves? These smaller spices, we've used the bigger spice, we've got the smaller spices now. Fantastic. So, oh, wow, I can see lots of different cardamoms there. Wonderful. So now we're going to stick these on in some of the gaps. So I'm going to stick mine around the edges. You can also stick them. So this is going to show you. You can stick these wherever you like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate. So that means one and then one of a different one and then come back to the other. So I'm going to put my cardamom. So I might do it over here. I've got a cardamom there and then I've got a clove and I've got a cardamom and I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna alternate them. I'm gonna lay them on first and then glue them after because I like to see the design come together. Um, it just helps you know what you're up to, what you, what, what you still need to do. Put the cardamom, got the clothes, so it's one at a time. Okay, so it's got I know some people's are slightly smaller than mine, they might get round a bit quicker. Over here I haven't got space to fit a spice, I'm just going to leave that gap, that's okay. I'm going to go around and I'm going to run there. So I've positioned them where I want them to go and now I'm going to glue them um, in. And if you did the paint and the glue for the base, it's already quite sticky anyway, so it's going to hold nicely. Um, if you haven't got the paint and the glue base, then you might need a bit of extra glue. But that was one of the reasons, just holds the spices a bit more. Okay, so once I've glued my edge, I want to fill in the other spaces with spices as well. So have a look at what spices you've got. Have a look at what spaces remain. We can just fill them up. So I want to put on more cardamoms. I've got, um, if you run out of something, that's okay. See what else you've got left over. And just arrange these and pop them on. So I'm going to stick with the cardamoms. I love, I just love the smell of cardamom. It's so nice. Okay. Nice and chai. In fact, this actually smells like a chai. I, I feel like after the workshop, it is going to be lunchtime. I have to go and make make a nice spicy chai to have. Okay. So just going round, and um, I'm fill, filled up my spaces with cardamom, and I'm going to fill up. Keep. I've got. I've got loads more cloves left. Loads more cloves. So as they look at your um, roof, see where you've got space and just fill it up. If you see the space and then it's very, it's quite relaxing to lay these all out. Okay, so I feel like I've kind of got all my spices and now all I need to do is just glue them on. I'm running out of glue, I'm gonna add some more glue. Okay. So if everyone is gluing away, all looks all look very busy. If anyone's got any questions about anything, about spices or about the project or about the festival, then uh, you can ask me. Okay.
I'm going to keep gluing. And um, somebody held up their wreath and it looked amazing, but I, I wouldn't recommend holding it up just yet. You need to leave it to dry for the rest of the afternoon. Um, if you've got the heater on today, then you can place your wreath next to the heater and um, that will help it dry quickly. Um, I am going to actually just, yeah, keep gluing. Okay. Now, everybody looks okay. I have just remembered that I wanted to show you how to attach some ribbon um, to your wreath at the end to hang it up. I forgot to bring some ribbon. The ribbon is in the room next door. So, you guys and girls keep gluing. I'm just gonna go and get a bit of ribbon. So hold on a second. I'll be back in maybe a minute or so. Okay, so I'm back. Wow, I can see some finished wreaths being held up. Ari, I can see yours. It looks absolutely wonderful, superb. And uh, I can see Shreya and Haradhana working away. Yolanda's got three different wreaths on the go in that workshop there. I see Anna, wonderful, all looking superb. So we've still got. 10 minutes so you can keep going. I'm going to show you the wreath. So this is my wreath um, now that I've got that was, um, it's got all the glue on there. Oh, I see a beautiful red wreath there. Wow, that looks spectacular. So I am going to actually move my wreath out of the way. And um, this is the one I showed you at the beginning of the workshop. This one's dry just means I can hold it up because <laughs> if I hold up the other one that's wet uh, it, the bits might fall off so you can actually hang up your wreath on a kitchen door you might have a pin that you can rest this on and um, if you've got some ribbon so I went and got my ribbon you can just feed some ribbon through this and I'm just going to um, tie a sort of bow on the top. So you can decide if you want to hang yours up. Okay. And with the ribbon, I can actually hang this up as well. I can hang this through there uh, on a hook on the kitchen door or in the kitchen wall, or, or maybe you want to keep it in your bedrooms. Um, but I do think it would look very nice as a kitchen wreath. So that's how you can hang your finished wreath up. Um, and as I say, you can do whatever design uh, you would like to do. Uh, I'm 